Higgs, it is uh, now time for me to welcome uh, uh, another friend of the Committee of Regions and a personal great friend, uh, the Vice President on, of the European Commission for promoting our European way of life. What more important than that? And uh, uh, I'm really happy to, to introduce to you uh, Margaritis Hinas, the Vice President of the Commission. Um, dear Commissioner, uh, it is a really interesting debate we will be having today on promoting the European values through the culture and the education. And you know very well that although we are a union of values, as it was stated in the Article 2 of the treaties, unfortunately today uh, they are being seriously challenged. So one of our main responsibilities is to defend and promote the European values, which is exactly the cement that unites us. In particular, we must engage our youth via education based on a simple question. If our children's parents and grandparents knew from their first-hand experience that the European Union is a project to establish and maintain peace, I wonder if the future generation of Europeans would know why they should support this project. And also, what should be the reason for them to remain together as European citizens? So once we define these two very important questions, then the answer will become very clear. It is our shared values that represent the blood going through the minds and souls of our people. And I'm convinced that in our responsibility as parents and as leaders to make sure that our educational system is properly enabled to offer our young generation clear proofs of European Union's values. For instance, I was always wondering why our classes on European history speak mostly about conflicts between our countries, while we shall learn from a past that divided us. We must also understand that our unity and peace today were made possible thanks to the European Union. And this reality must be taught to our children in our schools. This is our duty. And this is what we must do today if we want to have a tomorrow together. So in order to promote values via education and culture, I am sure that I can find an ally in you as Vice President responsible for the European way of life and for oversight of the European education area. While we are all aware that the European Union has limited competence on education, our regional and national authorities across the EU hold shared competences in terms of education and school curricula, including when it comes to the knowledge on the European Union and our values. Therefore, my dear friends, dear colleagues, based on our existing cooperation with the European Commission, Vice President, and in particular between Commissioner Gabriel and our SEDEC Commission here in the Committee of Regions, I want to propose to you a pilot joint project to promote European values. This project, this pilot project, could be on a voluntary basis for everyone, with full respect of subsidiarity and based on existing experiences in our regions. The objective here would be to create a community of practice that would bring Europe in all the classrooms. Many regions have already good experiences from educational and cultural projects promoting our founding values. We could set up a community of European classrooms supported by mayors and regional presidents, governors with schools, universities and cultural establishment that could promote an exchange of curricula and programs on European history, on values, on citizenship. If successful, this pilot project could evolve into a broader platform of regions, cities, villages, promoting the EU values in education. 
So your role as vice president, promoting the European way of life, is pivotal to get things moving on this area and this on this idea. So I count on you and our teams to make it happen while using the momentum on the conference on the future of Europe. Last week I was in Spain. I visited Madrid. I met with the president of Madrid, Miss Isabel Ayuso. And we discussed about the importance of the shared, the common values that we have as Europeans. It is what unites us. It is what is holding us together. And this should also be our new vision to strengthen our union. So we are here, regions, cities, to play this role. We are here to collaborate with you, Vice President Skinas and the Commission. And we are here to bring results in this very, very important area for us. So, Vice President, dear Margaritis, the floor is yours. Ευχαριστώ, κύριε Πρόεδρε, φίλε Απόστολε, dear uh, members, uh, dear friends. Uh, it's, it's a true pleasure and, and an honor to be here with you uh, for two reasons. First, because I, I understand that I am the first Commission representative to be physically present in the committee since last October. Uh, that's good. That's good news. In fact, I really wanted to come in person because uh, uh, there is no better way to engage and discuss with elected representatives like yourselves uh, uh, than looking uh, uh, at each other in the eye. Uh, Zoom, uh, it's good, but uh, not for all kinds of exchanges. So I wanted very much to come here in person and I'm, I'm delighted that I'm here. The second reason is because um, uh, Apostolos' invitation allows me to discuss with you how should I put this? Uh, the nice part of my portfolio, which is this uh, Europe of opportunities, of education, culture, sport, youth, uh, um, a, a Europe that vibrates. Uh, I also have another part in my portfolio for which I will come on another day, which is a bit more uh, thick, which is uh, border, security, migration, but I'm delighted uh, to, to, to do it on the former than on the latter. So, yes, this discussion on values through education and culture is very timely. It's timely because uh, our values have been severely uh, tested, as was our way of life during this horrible, uh, nightmarish uh, 15 months uh, we went through. Uh, at the same time, I must say, and this also reflects a certain... Uh, pride, collective pride for all Europeans, that despite this very severe test of our societies and of our model of society, uh, we were tested, we were shaken, we were threatened, but we resisted, we coped. Uh, this period was also an opportunity to remind ourselves of the resilience of our societies, to remind ourselves of the validity of what we have built together with strong public health and education systems that left no one behind, the cohesion of our societies, the defense of the most vulnerable, the fact that we are uh, uh, implementing the most ambitious uh, vaccination program in the history of humanity for all Europeans, that we have come up with, a, with an unprecedented historic recovery instrument. Of, of, of unprecedented ambition. So this is also part of who we are. This is also something that reflects our collective success. And no discussion on values or way of life should ignore uh, these things that uh, many times go unnoticed. Now, discussing uh, the angle from education and culture uh, also uh, acquires a certain uh, uh, interest because uh, these are uh, the areas where clearly uh, we shape the conscience of next generations. This is the areas where we build our toolbox, our instruments, and these are the areas where uh, uh, we need to 
cater for everyone who defends and stands for human dignity, pluralism, non-discrimination, tolerance, uh, social justice, solidarity, equality. This is the moment where Europeans learn to be Europeans through education and through culture. Let me start with education first. Uh, education, of course, forces us to operate in a in a in a rather asymmetric uh, policy area where we have to face a reality of very strong national competence in terms of curricula and uh, and constitutional arrangements in our member states but at the same time there is a very strong european dimension that is emerging on education that brings us together and bridges the differences that some of our national systems are conducive to and we have over the years managed to create this thread of common community European uh, interest on education, which uh, probably started uh, timidly uh, 20, 30 years ago, but now is very strong and it will become even stronger. Uh, Erasmus Plus is the jewel in the crown of this European dimension on education. So far, 10 million people 10 million Europeans benefited from this uh, unprecedented uh, experience. This is about the international dimension of learning through thousands of bottom-up cooperation projects. Uh, Erasmus has shaped not only education realities, but also has produced a new generation of Europeans who understand Europe differently. In the new Erasmus Plus, we have uh, practically doubled the amount of money that we'll be dedicating in the next seven years. We now have 26 billion euros for Erasmus Plus in the next seven years, to which you have to add 2.2 billion for uh, engagement international uh, Erasmus partnerships in the developing world. So it is not a surprise that this program would be one of the most positive one of the, 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 where our firepower will be concentrated on building values through education. And I go even further, because in my mind, in the future, Erasmus should not only be an option in Europe. Erasmus should become a fundamental right. Everyone in Europe who would have the ability, the ambition, the will, to go through an Erasmus uh, experience should have a guaranteed right to do it. Parallel to the Erasmus uh, program of education, we are building what is probably uh, known by most of you as a European education area. This European education area is not built in a political vacuum. It's not built as a self-standing product in a sterilized laboratory environment. This is an an area which is deeply rooted in our traditions, in our democratic systems, in our human rights, in our diversity, in our social justice traditions. And this European education area, which we want to uh, see uh, becoming a reality by 2025, would actually converge our education systems towards this European dimension we are striving for with many different elements. Mobility would be a key element, but also we are now building up very strong European university alliances. Alliances of universities from throughout Europe, many of whom, many of which uh, based in the regions you represent here. And we want with these alliances to produce this communality into the content of the educational process we want to fund these alliances to become living uh, unions of like-minded people. And at the end of this path, we want one day also to see European university degrees. This is an area where Europe has not done well so far. This is a problem that has cost us a lot in terms of international competition, but Europe has not yet become a destination for European university degrees. We are losing out to the United States and to Asia. As part of this European education area, I can imagine a moment, not tomorrow, but not far away either, 
where these uh, 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 common university alliances will also lead to common European degrees and, and, and much more presence of Europe in, in, in the area of higher education. Finally, we also have the uh, Jean Monnet uh, initiative, the Jean Monnet program. These are uh, uh, small uh, or medium, if you like, academic cells uh, dotted across the EU geography that uh, uh, mainly relate to EU studies and EU education. As of 2022, the action of Jean Monnet will offer funding for European education projects going beyond the academic environment, uh, bringing uh, teachers and, and many schools uh, uh, from society into EU studies learning. Before I go to culture, let me say a, word on, a final word on, on education. All this should not be seen as a closed circuit where educator, educators will talk to educators or academic communities will talk amongst themselves. That will not help us. If we want to build values, if we want to intensify uh, the, the common denominator of what Europe represents through education, we need the educational communities to open up to society. We do not want them to talk to themselves. We do not want academic discussions amongst academics. As in the Renaissance, European universities have always been a beacon of light for society at large. We want to take these debates on Europe out of the walls of the university and educational establishments. And I'm sure that your role as uh, uh, political leaders at regional level will be crucial in, in helping us to take these debates out. Few words on culture now. Uh, culture is also uh, part of this uh, values-driven approach that we want to see emerging in, in, in the years to come. In terms of values and, and citizenship, participation in cultural activities promotes uh, democracy, civic engagement, and we know that societies are more open and tolerant, economically stronger, and enjoy higher uh, uh, resilience where their citizens have access to a wide range of cultural activities and products. This is a fact. Um, we have a rich cultural heritage in Europe and our dynamic cultural and creative sectors help create and strengthen this European sense of belonging. In a recent survey of over 60,000 Europeans, culture was at the top of the list of factors most likely to create the feeling of community. And uh, this finding was uh, ahead of issues of other topics like history, geography, economics, or language. So culture is the main uh, uh, unifier. There again, uh, you are familiar with our uh, flagship program, Creative Europe which has both an audiovisual component, but also um, uh, a cultural activities component. Uh, you are also familiar with our European Capitals of Culture program, which is a very extensive and ambitious program that brings the Europe of culture very close to local communities and to which many cities represented in the Committee of Region have also uh, uh, been awarded this label in the past. And finally, as we're coming out of the pandemic, we now need to make everything possible to help culture, cultural and creative sectors uh, uh, reopen safely in this very delicate uh, environment in which we find ourselves in. And at the same time, other than safe reopening, we need to help them to move towards a sustainable recovery because culture and cultural activities uh, were uh, uh, the ones that paid an excessive price because of the confinement in the last period. Let me now conclude these introductory remarks and I very much uh, look forward to uh, exchanging with you by saying a few words on the pilot that the President Zikostas uh, has mentioned. Uh, yes, uh, we definitely support this idea of a pilot, uh, of a joint action plan uh, where we could use uh, the brain power uh, 
and the firepower that the Committee of Regions represents to try to open up our uh, uh, schools and learning institutions to uh, uh, European values and learning about Europe. This is a fantastic idea. We can do it together. Estás bien? And we should do this uh, uh, by exploring synergies to unleash this potential, of course, under this caveat that we can imagine this only in areas where the regions are responsible for education uh, across the European Union. And we will be there to support, to help, to fund. But I imagine this as an open-ended uh, uh, pledging process where regions can uh, contribute uh, ideas, initiatives, with a blessing, if you like, and the label of, of European Union. When I started this job um, at the beginning, and let me end with this, I, I had a very, uh, how should I put this, exciting hearing at the European Parliament, my confirmation hearing, it was the longest of all my colleagues. It lasted three hours and 21 minutes, which also is a proof of, of the interest around this idea of a European way of life. I had the chance then to say something that I want to repeat today in front of, of, the, of the committee, that for me, the European way of life is not a us versus the rest narrative. It's not a binary choice. It's not us against them. It's not a bulldozer. It's a mirror. The European way of life is a mirror, a mirror that reflects the diversity, the richness of our cultural traditions, uh, of our languages, of our history, of the way we live in society. And there is no better way to see this mirror in practice than looking at you. Because you, members of the Committee of Regions, you are very much the mirror that reflects this diversity of, of Europe's, of Europe's regions. And I'm delighted to have the chance to discuss with you these issues. Thank you again, Apostol. Thank you very much, uh, Vice President. Thank you very much, uh, Vice President. Um, let's open now our debate with uh, the members of the Committee of Regions. And let me start uh, by giving the floor to Ms. Uh, Isabel Ayuso. You need to press on the speak button, please. Ahora, okay. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Muchísimas gracias a Margarita y Sinas por su intervención y por su propuesta, así como al presidente Chichi Costas por su reciente visita a Madrid. Nuestra política de, de, la, de la Comunidad de Madrid, es sobre todo relacionado con este foro, tiene que ver siempre con la libertad y especialmente con la libertad educativa, algo por lo que siempre hemos apostado eh, la comunidad que presido en la región donde estamos ahora. Aquí el 96% de los padres puede elegir en primera opción el colegio y el modelo que quiere para sus hijos, independientemente del municipio o del código postal donde viva. Y así como por el modelo, por público, concertado, privado o por la educación especial. Pero también hemos buscado un modelo de convivencia entre las nuevas tecnologías y la escuela tradicional. Por un lado, eliminando el móvil de las aulas, pero al mismo tiempo profundizando en la digitalización, pero también en la cultura del esfuerzo, el sacrificio y el respeto al profesor. También tenemos desde el 2018 una asignatura específica de la Unión Europea o el fomento de las becas Erasmus, pero con nuevas propuestas. Pero el segundo pilar de nuestro gobierno es, sin duda, la familia, especialmente la natalidad y, muy por encima de todo, la vida, porque el invierno demográfico nos atañe a todos. Y a mí me sorprende que una Europa como la nuestra, nuestro proyecto europeo, que fundamenta sus raíces, que las hunde en Grecia o en Roma, en la libertad y en la vida, está poniendo tanto empeño en el aborto, como se está diciendo ahora en estas semanas, trasladándolo como un supuesto derecho universal cuando no nacen niños, cuando tenemos la población más envejecida del mundo y 
quede claro que si no hay niños, no va a haber Europa, no tendrá futuro y desde luego no habrá valores. Y si no hay niños y no hay defensa de nuestra cultura y de nuestros valores, poco vamos a poder promocionar en la educación. Por eso nosotros queremos eliminar barreras para las familias, para aquellas que quieren seguir adelante con sus embarazos y para tener, sobre todo, animarles a tener más hijos, que es lo que falta. Y espero que la Unión Europea se centre en esto también y se pregunte de dónde viene, bajo qué principio se fundó y cómo garantizar su existencia a largo plazo. Yo creo que ahí es fundamental la integración, la educación, la seguridad, los valores, la vida y, por encima de todo, la libertad. Y un proyecto en común, también para la cultura, pero en común, que a veces nos falta porque muchas veces en la Unión Europea vamos siempre a defender a nuestro propio país o a nuestra propia región. Yo creo que tiene que haber proyectos comunes, como hemos visto en la pandemia. Así que animo a todos los gobiernos regionales a reflexionar sobre ello. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ayuso. Uh, the floor now to Emil Bock, please. Dear President, dear Commissioner, my intervention is more abstract due to, uh, due to the time constraints. The education and culture represent the oxygen of our European way of life. For us, as EPP members, the education and culture are not technicalities, but key factors for the success of our European way of life. As long as we keep education and culture at the highest level of the political priorities, we have a common democratic future. Education and culture are the best antidote to intolerance, racism, populism, and ignorance. Education is the best way to get out of poverty, and there is no risk of bankruptcy, no matter how much money you invest. Dear Commissioner, Education and culture have always been at the heart of the attractiveness of the European way of life. 2,500 years ago, the Greeks, through the Marathon and Salamina victories against the Persian Empire, saved not just Athens, but the European civilization. Those victories had the significance of the success of the European civilization then represented by Athens with democracy, education, and culture as the main values. Later on, the Roman civilization spread around the world and survived for so many centuries precisely because of the values it promoted and the attractiveness for the others of the Roman civilizations. Nowadays, wherever you go in the world, in a music concert hall from Tokyo and Shanghai to Dubai or New York, you feel the spirit and music of Beethoven or Mozart. All I want to say, dear Commissioner, is that we as Europeans are strong and our European way of life is and it will be a model for the world as long as we, we defend and promote our values with the education, culture and others at its core. I strongly support the pilot project action plan you proposed as President Ticostas. Why? Because it's emphasizing the magic power of the education. And last but not least, together. The power of togetherness is the very brand of the European way of life. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, the floor now to Ms. Karjalainen from the PES Group. Arvoisa komission varapuheenjohtaja Sinas, PES-ryhmän puolesta haluan kiittää teitä erittäin tärkeästä puheenvuorosta eurooppalaisista arvoista koulutuksessa ja kulttuurissa. Tämänpäiväinen keskustelu on sitäkin tärkeämpää, kun otetaan huomioon joidenkin jäsenvaltioiden viimeaikainen piittaamattomuus eurooppalaisista arvoista ja eurooppalaisista elämäntavastamme. Tämä tärkeä eurooppalainen elämäntapa on ollut teidän vastuualueillanne. Valitettavasti tilanne on huonontunut viime aikoina, mikä heikentää Euroopan yhdentymishanketta. Meidän kaikkien olisi noudatettava nolla toleranssia eurooppalaisten arvojen loukkauksiin. Koulutus on keskeinen suvaitsemattomuuden, ääriliikkeiden ja populismin peloite. Sen vuoksi meidän on työskenneltävä eurooppalaisuuden edistämiseksi jo hyvin nuoresta iästä lähtien ja myös Euroopan kansalaisuutta koskevan Euroopan laajuisen opetussuunnitelman avulla. Euroopan unioni on itsessään arvo. Ihmisarvo, vapaus, demokratia, tasa-arvo, 
oikeusvaltio ja ihmisoikeuksien kunnioittaminen, moniarvoisuus, syrjimättömyys, suvaitsevaisuus, oikeudenmukaisuus, yhteisvastuu ja tasa-arvo ovat yhteisen eurooppalaisen identiteettimme ydin. Näistä samoista arvoista seuraa kaikki Euroopan kansalaisuuteen liittyvät oikeutemme. Eurooppalaisten olisi opittava ja harjoitettava tätä jo hyvin nuorella iällä ja ruohonjuuritasolla. Tämän vuoksi eurooppalaisia arvoja olisi puolustettava ja vaalittava järkevästi kaikissa eurooppalaisissa koulutusjärjestelmissä ja kaikilla koulutustasoilla esiopetuksesta korkeaasteen koulutukseen ja ammatilliseen koulutukseen. Arvoisa komissaari, paikallis- ja alueviranomaiset voivat auttaa edistämään eurooppalaisia arvoja sekä eurooppalaista identiteettiä ja kansalaisuutta koulutuksen ja kulttuurin avulla alue- ja paikallistasolla. Voitte siis luottaa ryhmäni tukeen tälle tavoitteelle. Kiitoksia. Thank you very much. The floor now to Mr. Kaiser from the PS Group. Ja, danke. Herr Präsident, äh, Herr Vizepräsident, Kultur und Bildung spielen eine zentrale Rolle bei der Förderung unserer europäischen Lebensweise und unserer vielfach gemeinsamen europäischen Werte und damit unserer Identität, also unserem European Way of Life. Ich möchte an die Aussage meiner Vorrednerin Anna Karjalainen anknüpfen und unterstreichen, dass wir Bildung innerhalb der Europäischen Union zugänglicher und integrativer machen müssen. Bildung ist der Schlüssel zur Freiheit, Vielfalt, Nichtdiskriminierung, Toleranz, Gerechtigkeit, Solidarität und Gleichheit. Sie muss durchlässig sein zwischen den Institutionen und sie muss barrierefrei sein. Bildung schafft einen verbesserten Zugang zu Chancengerechtigkeit und ermöglicht jungen Europäern und Europäerinnen ihr volles Potenzial zu entwickeln und es umzusetzen. Davon sind wir in der sozialdemokratischen Familie zutiefst überzeugt und treten daher für eine Union der Kinder ein. Was bedeutet Union der Kinder? Bildung darf kein Privileg sein. Sie muss für alle und überall zur Verfügung stehen. Aus diesem Grunde kommen dem lebensbegleitenden Lernen die Möglichkeit zu Umschulungen bis zum Ende der beruflichen Karriere eine besondere Rolle zu. Als Landeshauptmann von Kärnten bin ich überzeugt, dass jede Investition in die Bildung unserer Kinder und Jugendlichen auch eine wichtige Investition in ihre und unsere Zukunft und unsere Werte ist. Daher haben wir das Ziel postuliert, Kärnten zur kinder- und familienfreundlichsten Region Europas zu machen. Daran arbeiten wir intensiv Tag und Nacht. Was machen wir konkret? Wir folgen dem Grundsatz, zumindest eine Schule pro Gemeinde, wobei finanzielle, soziale und demografische Aspekte im Vordergrund stehen, schaffen sogenannte Bildungskampi und Bildungszentren, indem wir Bildungseinrichtungen zusammenführen und garantieren durch inklusive, gleichberechtigte, hochwertige Bildung und wirken durch Ganztagesschulen sozialer Ungleichheit und Bildungsarmut entgegen. Sehr geschätzter Herr Vizepräsident, Sie haben mit uns Partner an Ihrer Seite. Danke schön. Uh, Ms. Kulan from the Renew Europe Group now. You have the floor. We cannot hear you. There is a problem with your microphone. We can see you. We cannot hear you. Let me move to Mr. Go ahead. Can we hear you? No, there is a problem with your sound. Maybe it works without without the hearing. The... Anyway, let me move. Yes, try without. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Dear President. No. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, okay. Dear President, this is us. Uh, Vice President Sheenas, fellow representatives of the European Union, good afternoon from Ireland. And I welcome in particular um, President Tsitsikostas' private project on the, uh, on the European uh, cooperation. As a teacher, it would be very heartening to have more um, cooperation across the European Union. And indeed, the, the Commissioner's suggestion um, is more resonant, I think, of the Enlightenment in Europe um, as of the Renaissance, a union of ideas, which it certainly should be embraced. 
Our European Union is founded on the values of respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law and respect for human rights, including the rights of persons belonging to minorities. These values are common to the member states in a society in which pluralism, non-discrimination, tolerance, justice, solidarity and equality between men and women prevail. That is what it says in our Treaty of the European Union. Fellow Europeans, one of our member states, Hungary, the latest laws there, which effectively conflate paedophilia and sexual minorities, are a gross affront to the values of the European Union. They call to mind a period in our history when people were incarcerated and, and tortured as a result of their religion or their sexual orientation. When one idea of identity supersedes all others, society suffers. As a teacher of history to teenagers here in Ireland and as a public representative who has lived through a social revolution on this island, where we were the first country to legalise gay marriage by popular vote, with 62% of the population voting yes, I am shocked and condemn in the most vehement terms the recent developments in Hungary. A 2017 study in Hungary found that more than half of the MIT students there felt unsafe at school and more than two thirds suffered some form of verbal abuse about their sexual orientation. The circumscribing of sex education, preventing young people from finding images that they can identify with in textbooks and presentations in, our, in, their, in schools is simply unforgivable. I call on Hungary to rethink and I call on us in the European Union to sanction such unforgivable action. I wish to move away from the area of sex education and to look at the issue of language learning. As local representatives at regional level, we understand the importance of brokering, of talking, of compromise. We all very much miss the energy and synergy of debating each other in the chamber there. As the old advert used to say, it's good to talk. Language can be a barrier between nations and can hinder natural communication. As the Rapporteur for the European Commission of the Region's opinion on the Digital Education Action Plan, I firmly believe that digital tools can benefit and assist people in learning languages right across the generations. This would certainly help to promote more of our values in the European Union. In my role as a teacher, I teach through Irish, our first language here in Ireland. Our students study French, Spanish, German, Italian, and I'm proud to say that we have an interpreter on the Commission's interpretive staff, one of our former students. Recently, our students won a competition which was to encourage the promotion of language learning and held days of screenings of European film, thematic food days, um, the learning of natural dances, the displaying of flags and emblems. This is the sort of thing that I would have promoting from our primary to our secondary schools and is very important for the in, uh, inculcation of European values. Our schools must be places of open exchange of views and knowledge. Let us continue to give every student a chance to fulfil their potential Thank you. so that they will grow up to be European citizens, clear in the knowledge of the values which will protect democracy in Europe. As Immanuel Kant said, dare Thank to know, much. have courage to use your reason. Thank you, President. Thank you. Mr Kovacs, please, from the ECR group, you have the floor. Köszönöm. Köszönöm a szót, elnök úr, tisztelt alelnök úr, tisztelt kollégák. Nagyon örülök, hogy eljött hozzánk, és vitát folytathatunk az európai életmódunk és az európai értékek népszerűsítéséről. Azt gondolom, sokan fogadtuk örömmel és nagy reményekkel, hogy a bizottság prioritásai között megjelent az európai életmód elémozdítása, a polgárok és az értékeink védelme. Tisztelt alelnök úr! Közös európai értékeinket az Európai Unióról szerződés és az alapjogi karta határozzák meg. Ezek az Európai Unió alapértékei. Az európai életmód azonban ennél sokkal többet jelent, és sokkal nehezebb pontosan definiálni. Egyrészt vannak közös gyökereink, amelyek összekötnek bennünket. A tíz parancsolat, a görög filozófia, a római jog, a kereszténység, a felvilágosodás, az emberi méltóság és jogok tisztelete mind-mind olyan tényező, amelyek összekötik Európa polgárait. Másrészt sokszínűek vagyunk, eltérő nemzeti identitásokkal rendelkezünk, hagyományaink, szokásaink, nyelveink, zenéink, ételeink mind-mind ezt a sokszínűséget képviselik. 
Ezek vagyunk mi európaiak, egység a sokféleségben. Fontos, hogy a közös értékeink meghatározásánál a jogi szempontok mellett a közös gyökereinket és az eltérő nemzeti identitásunkat is figyelembe vegyük. Gőte csodálatosan fogalmazta ezt meg egy mondatban, legtöbb, amit gyermekeinknek adhatunk, gyökerek és szárnyak. Ezt ma úgy mondhatjuk, legtöbb, amit az európai polgároknak adhatunk, gyökerek és szárnyak. Tisztelt alelnök úr! A regionális és helyi képviselőként napi kapcsolatban állunk a településeink az oktatási kulturális intézményeivel. Gyakorlatot tapasztalataink és ötleteink vannak, hogy hogyan lehet közös európai értékeket, életmódot népszerűsíteni. Javaslom, hogy a regionális és helyi önkormányzatokat is vonják be a programok megvalósításába. Partnerek vagyunk az együttműködésben, és örömmel mondhatom, hogy fiataljaink is nagyon aktívan vesznek részt az európai oktatási programokban. Köszönöm szépen. Thank you very much, Mr. McCarthy from the EA Group. You have the floor, please. Yeah, thanks, President and dear Commissioner. Uh, you mentioned you mind the softer elements of the EU project, education and culture, and yes, they are toolboxes, as you know it, but they are also the DNA glue of binding us together and they make us who we are. And for centuries, European identity has been silently built among people who live inside and outside the present uh, EU. But we have to connect that feeling of cultural belonging to Europe, to the European Union. And we cannot do so by just presenting the EU as a project which creates economic benefits. It needs a strong um, emotional component. Uh, and to feel a common identity, we need to have a sense of a common fate. And, and that is something that we've lacked in the past. Uh, and also there's a fear that we'll keep lacking it as time goes on because of globalization. Um, it is absolutely necessary to teach children and young adults about the European Union and its added value, but also about the challenges it's actually facing. Um, Mobility and peer-to-peer -peer programs, as, as you have details, such as Erasmus, Erasmus+, Plus, the Jean Monnet program, the European Capital programs, have done more for European unity than hundreds of communication campaigns. And even the new Discover EU is a great story. Uh, and providing people with tools to engage with the EU project doesn't have to be complicated. The simplest of projects have worked really well and have been embraced by many citizens. And the projects our mirrors, to use your own analogy you speak about, um, really need to be promoted by all of us more. Um, and we need to promote and enable contacts between people at all levels, and every generation um, then can be more European than the previous one. Um, I am really glad to hear that the pilot project that the COR proposes is one which your brief is interested in pursuing. Ultimately, it does aim to assist the exchange of best practices and is rooted in our communities and neighbourhoods. And I'm also very happy to hear of the European Education Area and University Alliances and many local regional authorities and universities work hand in hand to make their respective municipalities um, a better place. So we do need to keep working with each other uh, and keep pushing forward. Uh, many thanks, Commissioner. Ms. Hapanen, please, from the Greens. Kirje Proedre, Samilisso Ligo, Sailini Kake, Totesa Laksustin Glossa, mutta Finlandesika. Selonassa Sefaristo iso ja tin Eskeriana, Milissume Simmera ja tin Ekpedevsike politismo, ke kirje Siina Selonassa Sefaristo Parapoli ja tin Polioreo Sinomiliassas. Otani muna mikri, ihatin efkeriana daksi devo polisti Evropi, igonis mumu piraesti sales horesti Evropi, ke etsi iha oreksi na masotis kloostes, ke iha oreksi evrikadin oreksi na siso, ke etsis ales hores, ke etsi emasa poles kloostes, kallika, suidika, elinika, ke anglika. Ke selona pooti, Itsellä kesimmerata pediaasa ei brikanetin efkerianna masunetin glossa, ketis poles glosses epidi etsi savrune oti imaste imaste fiili savrune fiili ke ke na na riskune allus tropus na na zun ke etsi sa iso isa jini pioplusi nyt puhun suomeksi hyvä Varaa puhe, puheenjohtaja, haluan kiittää teitä vielä erittäin hyvästä puheenvuorosta ja tuen kovasti puheenjohtajamme aloitetta 
pilotista komission ja alueiden komitean yhteistyössä eurooppalaisen kulttuurin ja koulutuksen edistämiseksi. Alueiden komitea on osallistunut viidellä lausunnolla kaikkiin Euroopan komission kuluneen vuoden aikana julkaisemiin strategioihin joissa, ja tiedonantoihin, jotka koskevat tasa-arvoa unionin olennaisina arvoina. Näitä ovat nämä viisi lausuntoa tiedonantoa strategia ovat olleet sukupuolten tasa-arvostrategia, romaanien tasa-arvoa, osallisuutta ja osallistumista koskeva EU-strategiakehys, EU-rasismin torjunnan toiminnan, toiminnan suunnitelma, vammaisten henkilöiden oikeuksia koskeva strategia ja HLBTIQ-henkilöiden tasa-arvoa koskeva strategia. On hyvä ottaa nämä huomioon EUn kaikissa toiminnoissa. Hyvä puheenjohtaja, lyhyesti koulumme ovat moninaisia, meillä on oppilaita eri kielisiä. On tärkeää, että jokainen lapsi ja nuori Euroopassa kokee kuuluvansa eurooppalaiseen yhteisöön ja opettajana haluan myös tukea opettajien vaihtoa ja opettajien koulutuksen edistämistä eri Euroopan maista. Kiitos herra puheenjohtaja Haristo Kirjebroidre Paraboli. Ευχαριστώ, ευχαριστώ εγώ, σαν το είσαι απίθανη. Αυτό, αυτό είναι μια, μια αλήθεια. Και συγχαρητήρια για τα απίθανα ελληνικά σου επίσης. Uh, okay, uh, colleagues, we have seven uh, colleagues who want to intervene. What we don't have is time. Uh, you know that we will lose the translation in 10 minutes. So, uh, I suggest that uh, they all say... Uh, one word, uh, so I will give 30 seconds, half a minute, to each seven uh, people who want to intervene, just to give the basic idea, uh, so as to leave time to the Commission, to the Vice President to respond. So, please, Mr. Whoop, let's try it. Thank you, Herr President, Herr Vice President. I möchte to den Fokus auf die öffentlichen Bibliotheken richten. Sie haben eine sehr, sehr große Reichweite in die Bevölkerung hinein. Kein anderes äh, Angebot ist vergleichsweise so niedrigschwellig. Keine andere Kultur- und Bildungseinrichtung erreicht Generationen, Kultur- und Milieuübergreifend so viele unterschiedliche Menschen. Und deswegen ist es wichtig, dass wir, wenn wir über Kultur und die Bedeutung von Bildungsarbeit bei der Förderung von Demokratie in der Europäischen Union sprechen, dass wir den Fokus auch auf die Bibliotheken, auf die öffentlichen Bibliotheken richten, die hier einen sehr großen Beitrag leisten. Herzlichen Dank. Mr. Whoop, congratulations. The floor to Ms. Rausio, please. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you so much, Mr. Sinas. Uh, I think we are now discussing about the true future of Europe. The values and the culture is the, is the most important thing. Uh, I want to point out that one good practice we could we, and we should use all around the Europe is a child-friendly city uh, model that we could uh, apply in all uh, European cities and uh, regions. And uh, in my city, in the city of Hamelina, we have good examples of this, and I really strongly recommend on, on focusing on children, on European children. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Rauschio. Mr. Bianco. Presidente, mi limito a ringraziare il uh, vicepresidente per il suo intervento. Lo ringrazio innanzitutto per essere venuto, come direbbe l'agente di polizia del commissario Montalbano, per essere venuto di persona personalmente e per aver parlato con tanta passione. Ma lo ringrazio soprattutto per quello che ha detto sia in materia di Erasmus e di formazione dei giovani, sia in materia scolastica. Un telegramma. Il Comitato delle Regioni ha approvato un importante parere per utilizzare anche a fini imprenditoriali per i giovani i beni culturali. Quando avrà tempo e voglia potremo tornare su questo argomento che ha una grande rilevanza anche per creare imprenditoria giovanile. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you very much, Ms. Maghiar. Köszönöm a szót, tisztelt biztos úr! Hazug, nemtelen és sajnos összehangolt támadások érik Magyarországot a pedofília elleni határozott fellépés miatt. Kérem, olvassák el a pedofília elleni törvényünket, angolul is hozzáférhető. Most is egy ilyen hazug, alaptalan vádat kaptunk az ír kolléganőtől. 
A törvény a gyermekek fokozott védelmét célozza és fellép a gyerekekre irányuló bármiféle szexuális propaganda ellen nagyon helyesen, de nem szól az LMBTQ orientációjú felnőtt emberekről, akik jogait törvények biztosítják régóta. A hazugvádak sajkózása a tények ismerete nélkül igazán szégyenletes. A gyermekek nevelésének kérdései a nemzeti szuverenitás körébe tartoznak, és mi eltökélten védjük a gyermekeink érdekeit. Köszönöm. Thank you. Mr. Svarts, Kiefer, please. Danke für das Wort, sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrter Herr äh, Vizepräsident. Man darf bei solchen Themen wie Kultur und Bildung nicht vergessen, dass der Stand der Integration in den ostmitteleuropäischen Mitgliedstaaten anders ist als zum Beispiel in Westeuropa. Nehmen wir das Beispiel der Sprachkenntnisse. In den westeuropäischen Grenzregionen ist es selbstverständlich, die Sprache des Nachbarlandes zu lernen, was natürlich die Verbindungen verstärkt. Bei uns scheint das fast unmöglich zu sein. Die sprachliche und kulturelle Vielfalt ist unser wichtigster Wert und deren Sicherung und Förderung gehört zu den fundamentalen Aufgaben der EU. Man muss es aber immer berücksichtigen, dass zum Beispiel die Mitgliedstaaten von Ostmitteleuropa auf einem anderen äh, Integrationsgrad stehen. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. Mr. Nika, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, thank you, Mr. Vice President Sinas, for the very eloquent uh, arguments. Uh, the European Capitals of Culture action is meant to show up all those values that the EU stands for. Democracy, civic involvement, human rights, diversity, EU identity and citizenship. All these cities, all the cities that hold uh, this title structure their cultural programs around these values. So, so my... Okay, sorry. So my uh, um, uh, proposal will be uh, among other measures to consider a stronger promotion from the European level for the European capital, capitals of culture and not just leave it at the level of cities uh, marketing strategy. That would be a real support to put the spotlight and the international attention of the selected cities as a means to emphasize the richness of the, and the cultural diversity of Europe and also the EU identity principles and our way of life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nika. Mr. Gamalo Aler, please. Mi idea principal es hoy reivindicar o recordar la importancia de los caminos de Santiago, del camino de Santiago, la ciudad de la que yo procedo, porque ha jugado un papel crucial promoviendo el diálogo y el intercambio cultural y creando entre las personas un vínculo integrador en toda Europa. Creo que el camino de Santiago está en la base de los valores europeos y yo le quiero agradecer al vicepresidente Esquinas que haya apoyado desde el principio el fenómeno jacobeo y los caminos de Santiago e invitarle tanto al vicepresidente Esquinas como al presidente Chichi Costas y a todos ustedes a que nos visiten en Santiago este año y el próximo. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Um, so... Uh, thank all of you for respecting the time limit that we set together. And I would like now to give directly the floor to the Vice President, uh, Margaritis Hinas, for his uh, uh, responses and uh, his overall reaction on what uh, we discussed today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me first tell you that I'm very much impressed by, by the, the, the enthusiasm of your interventions and the quality of, of your suggestions. It could not be otherwise because I know that uh, you feel passionately about these issues. Uh, you, you, you do not live in, a, in an exoplanet. You live uh, with the people in society uh, at the local level and it, it makes perfect sense to relay these concerns in Brussels. I have five minutes and five points. Let's, let's try to go uh, emulate your example and go one, one minute per point. Point number one that relates to what uh, uh, Isabella Yuso and um, others had said. Uh, I do not think that in Europe there is something that we could call a homo europeus. There is not one size fits it all. There is not one model for a European homo. But there is a corpus europeum of values. 
So the diversity that shapes our reality in Europe is totally legitimate and is grounded in law. So where we're discussing issues like uh, reproductive health, uh, same-sex marriage, uh, abortions, it, it, it in a way makes sense that our traditions and our legal instruments have a differentiated approach. So no homo europeus. But at the same time, the, the, the corpus europeum of our values is what binds us together. And this difference, I think, is something that we should keep very present in our mind. The first does not eliminate the second. And our job is to be able to distinguish between the two. Then uh, Ankar Halainen, and that's point two, asks me, okay, but let's, let's define these European values. Let's see what is this corpus europeum of values. Uh, for ease of reference, this is to be found in Article 2 of the treaties and in the Charter of Fundamental Rights attached to the treaties. That's the short answer. The more elaborate definition of these European values is very simple. We are all democracies. We defend the rights of minorities. We safeguard the role of women in the family, in the society, and in the workplace. We are world champions of human rights. We are world champions of personal data. We have universal systems for education and health. We take care of our elderly. And we have no death penalty. This is what binds us together. And Parts of all this you probably can find in other parts of the world. But all of this together, you will find it only here in Europe. Point number three uh, from uh, Mr. Box, uh, very inspirational and historic references. I agree with you that if we look back at our history uh, from the uh, times of Salamina and, and uh, Marathon and Thermopylae, until now, the enemy is always the same. And the enemy is the same because the enemy is those who want to destroy what we stand for. It may change names, but the enemy is always the same. The same way that uh, uh, the Hellenic civilization and democracy was always a, a thorn in, in, in a world of uh, authoritarian leaders at the time who wanted to crush it, the same way Europe with everything we represent today is something that it's, it's, to many people, it's a nuisance. That's why they don't want to see us succeed. And that's why they, they fight us. They fight us through disinformation, fake news, uh, hybrid threats, uh, you name it. Point number four. Um, uh, especially for uh, uh, Mr. McCarthy, who who said that we're not yet we're not only a market, we are something more than a market. Fully agree. Our heads of state and government in the European Council last week, for the first time in many years, they have been discussing precisely that, and they agreed. <laughs> For the first time, the European Council spent time discussing values. And they, they, they came to that conclusion that we are not just a market. We are a community of values. And um, there is another uh, uh, a compatriot of Mr. McCarthy uh, who put it very uh, nicely in a sentence, uh, Bono, the singer of the uh, U2 uh, group, who said actually a sentence that I would have liked to say myself, but uh, Bono was faster. He said, Europe is a thought that needs to become a feeling. <laughs> and I think he said it all, that Europe is something that we often have in our minds. It's something that is around us, but it will become something more only if we feel it inside. 
and everything we have been doing with, with Erasmus, with Money, with uh, Discover Europe, with the Solidarity Corp, with Jean Monnet, with culture, uh, European cultural capitals, points out to, to that direction. Point number five and final point. I also agree with many of you, uh, like uh, um, Mr. Wolf, for example, um, and um, Mr. Camilo Ayer, when they say that there are other areas, there are other issues, there are other topics that can help us build this communality of thinking, like libraries, like the Camino de Santiago. I would also add to that list uh, the preservation, conservation, and branding of heritage sites in Europe. Everything that we can do to bring this together under one single roof of European culture and valuing what we, what we have, what the treasures uh, that history bestowed on us, this is also a fantastic opportunity. And there again, your role as regional uh, leaders would be crucial. So thank you again for your very warm uh, welcome and reception. And I promise to come back for the other part of the portfolio, migration, security, and the rest. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Vice President. We will uh, certainly see you again soon for the other issues uh, of your uh, portfolio. But I think, and seeing the interest of uh, our uh, fellow colleagues online and in person, these matters are of great interest for all of us. And thank you very, very much for being here with us today. Uh, colleagues, we take a little break and we will be back in 25 minutes. <laughs>